So you are a big L libertarian, so I suspect that you know more than the average bear about um, the corrupt election system. Yeah. Because one of, one of the things that just um, sticks in my craw, um, the first time I learned that, and I, and I suspect even most people watching this don't know the fact that Republicans are automatically on the ballot, Democrats are automatically on the ballot, but if you're a third party, you have to spend almost, in the case of the Libertarian Party, historically they've spent almost all of their money just collecting signatures mm -hmm. and jumping through hoops and hiring lawyers just to get their candidate's name on the ballot. Yeah. Why is that? Well, I mean, the, the people who were writing the laws are the Democrats and the Republicans. And so, of course, they write laws to suppress any anybody else. Uh, I think one of the glaring stories in the last couple of years was was Larry Sharp in, in New York, right, where essentially he was running for governor. And in the middle of his campaign, they changed the rules on him. They made it so that he had to get more signatures in less time, and then they voided a bunch of the signatures they had. And every state is different. Every state has different, you know, some states are easy to get on the ballot and some states are not. But I feel like if I told you, uh, you, you can't, you can't run for anything. You're, you, you know, it's not possible for you to run. And I told that to the average person. They wouldn't believe me. They'd be like, well, I'm just going to go sign up and do it. I mean, and that's just not the case. And and you hear people talking about, well, well, Trump's going to run as an independent if he doesn't get, um, you know, the nomination or something like that. And I said, well, he'll just lose. And they're like, well, why? Because even he won't be able to get on the ballot, right? He won't have ballot access. He won't have ballot access, right? So the thing is, is that this system forces people to run as a Republican or a Democrat. And... And then what's really kind of crazy about the whole system is those are two corporations. The RNC and the DNC are corporations, right? And they make up the rules, right? And when you go as a, as a politician and you're going to run under those um, umbrellas, they make you sign pledges and do certain things that, you know, you might not want to do. But you're if you want to play the game and you want to be their nominee, then you have to agree to all these things that may not even be what what you believe. But if you want to run for office there, you have to do it. And so there's another, you know, part of the rig system. Right. And I feel like um, one ballot, one vote is kind of what I've been talking about. Right. Is that right now another part of the way they rig the system is through the primary elections. Right. Um we have you, you, a person that just asked me, they said, hey, I'm in Virginia, Lars, and I want to vote for you. Will you be on my primary ballot? I only can get a Democrat or a Republican ballot. There's no other ballot. And I said, well, then it's probably unlikely that I'm going to be on your ballot. Right. And he's, he, he said, I don't understand why I can't vote for you. Right. And I'm like, well, that's the rig system. Right. And so I feel like I'd like to get rid of primaries altogether. There's no reason taxpayers should be paying for private corporations choosing of who their nominee is right it should literally just be everybody gets the same ballot why do different people get different ballots that doesn't make any sense to me right we're voting for in this case president why does one person get this kind of ballot and another person no that's that when you think about that common sense says we should just get one ballot and we vote on the people that are on there and then we make up our mind right and that's who the president should be